Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all consolation, who consoles us in all our affliction, so that we may be able to console those who are in any affliction with the consolation with which we ourselves are consoled by God. For just as the suffering of Christ are abundant for us, so also our consolation is abundant through Christ. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you carried our sins in your body on the tree so that we might have life. May we and all who remember this day find new life in you now and the world to come, where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. A reading from John chapter 19, verses 28 through 30. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things had already been accomplished to fulfill the scripture, said, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine upon a branch of hyssop and brought it to his mouth. Therefore, when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. To us it's three words. It is finished. To Jesus it was just one word, tetelestai. It was a word that was common in his culture, a word that was written across a, a contract when the contract had been paid off. For example, if you took out a mortgage on your home and you paid the mortgage off, the banker would write, Tetelestai, it is finished, across the contract to show that you didn't owe anything anymore. The word also means that something is accomplished. John reminds us that Jesus, knowing that all things had already been accomplished to fulfill the scriptures, spoke from the cross. His words, it is finished, are the indication for us that he had accomplished what he came to do. That on the cross he had become our sin, that he had become a curse for us. That on the cross he was separated, we might say, from the Father as he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? On the cross he experienced for us the punishment for sin that we deserve. He did that so that that punishment would be paid, so that judgment would be taken care of. And he said, it is finished, to speak to us that he had fulfilled all that needed to be done for us to be set free from our sin, to us, for us, to be set free from death, for us, that we might be brought into fellowship with him. Today we remember that day when he spoke these words from the cross, it is finished. So hear the story in word and song. And he came out and proceeded, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples also followed him. When he arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and began to pray, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. 
yet not my will, but yours be done. Now an angel from heaven appeared to him, strengthening him. And being in agony, he was praying very fervently, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling down upon the ground. When he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping from sorrow, and said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray, that you may not enter into temptation. Go to dark Gethsemane, ye that feel the tempter's power, your Redeemer's conflict see. Watch with him one bitter hour. Turn not from his griefs away. Learn of Jesus Christ to pray. Follow to the judgment hall. View the Lord of life arraigned. O oh, the wormwood and the gall, O oh, the pangs his soul sustained. Shun not suffering, shame, or loss. Learn of him to bear the cross. Calvary's mournful mountain climb, there adoring at his feet. Mark that miracle of time, God's own sacrifice complete. It is finished, hear the cry. Learn of Jesus Christ to die. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the ravine of the Kidron, where there was a garden, in which he entered with his disciples. Now Judas also who was betraying him, knew the place. For Jesus had often met there with his disciples. Judas then, having received the Roman cohort and officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. So Jesus, knowing all the things that were coming upon him, went forth and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus the Nazarene. He said to them, I am he. And Judas also, who was betraying him, was standing with them. So when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Therefore he again asked them, Whom do you seek? And they said, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these go their way. Ah, holy Jesus, how hast thou offended that man to judge thee? hath in hate pretended by foes derided by thine own rejected O most afflicted who was the guilty who brought this upon thee? Alas, my treason, Jesus hath undone thee. T 
T'was I, Lord Jesus, I it was denied Thee. I crucified Thee. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he had gone out to the gateway, another servant girl saw him and said to those who were there, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them, for even the way you talk gives you away. Then he began to curse and swear, I do not know the man. And immediately a rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the words which Jesus had said, Before a rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now when morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him to Pilate the governor. Then when Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that he had been condemned, he felt remorse and returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See to that yourself. And he threw the pieces of silver into the temple sanctuary and departed. And he went away and hanged himself. For me, kind Jesus, was thine incarnation, thy mortal sorrow, and thy life's oblation. Thy death of anguish and thy bitter passion for my salvation. Therefore, kind Jesus, since I cannot pay thee, I do adore thee and will ever pray thee. Think on thy pity and thy love unswerving. Not my deserving. Early in the morning, the chief priests, with the elders and scribes and the whole council, immediately held a consultation. And binding Jesus, they led him away and delivered him to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, It is as you say. The chief priests began to accuse him harshly. Then Pilate questioned him again, saying, Do you not answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so Pilate was amazed. Now at the feast he used to release for them any one prisoner whom they requested. The man named Barabbas had been imprisoned with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the insurrection. The crowd went up and began asking him to do as he had been accustomed to do for them. Pilate answered them, saying, 
Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he was aware that the chief priests had handed him over because of envy. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to ask him to release Barabbas for them instead. Again, answering, Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with him whom you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! But Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! Wishing to satisfy the crowd, Pilate released Brabus for them. And after having Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. O sacred head now wounded, with grief and shame weighed down, now scornfully surrounded with thorns thine only crown. O sacred head, what glory, what bliss till now was thine. Yet though despised and gory, I joy to call thee mine. What thou, my Lord, hast suffered was all for sinners' gain. Mine, mine was the transgression, but thine the deadly pain. Lo, here I fall, my Savior, tis I deserve thy place. Look on me with thy favor, vouchsafe to me thy grace. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole Roman cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they knelt down before him and mocked him, saying, Hail! King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and began to beat him on the head. After they had mocked him, they took the scarlet robe off him and put his own garments back on him and led him away to crucify him. What language shall I borrow? To thank thee, dearest friend, For this thy dying sorrow, Thy pity without end. O oh, make me thine forever, And should I fainting be, Lord, let me never, never outlive my love to Thee. Be near when I am dying, O oh, show Thy cross to me. Lord, on Thy help relying, Come thou and set me free. These eyes, new faith receiving, From Jesus shall not move. For he who dies believing, Dies safely through thy love.
And as they were coming out, they found a man of Cyrene named Simon, whom they pressed into service to bear his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they gave him wine to drink mixed with gall. And after tasting it, he was unwilling to drink. And when they had crucified him, they divided up his garments among themselves by casting lots. And sitting down, they began to keep watch over him there. And above his head, they put up the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. At that time, two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And those passing by were hurling abuse at him, wagging their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come now down from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he delights in him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The robbers who had been crucified with him were also insulting him with the same words. When I survey the wondrous cross, on which the Prince of Glory died. My richest gain I count but loss, and poor contempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God. All the vain things that charm me most I sacrifice them to his blood. It was now about the sixth hour, and darkness fell over the whole land until the ninth hour, because the sun was obscured. And the veil of the temple was torn in two, and Jesus, crying out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. Now when the centurion saw what had happened, he began praising God, saying, Certainly this man was innocent. And all the crowds who came together for this spectacle when they observed what had happened, began to return, beating their breasts. And all his acquaintances and the women who accompanied him from Galilee were standing at a distance, seeing these things. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingle down. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet? O'er thorns compose so rich a crown. Were the whole realm of nature
determine that were a present far too small. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my soul, my life, my all. When evening had already come, because it was the preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea came, a prominent member of the council, who himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. And he gathered up courage and went in before Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate wondered if he was dead by this time, and summoning the centurion, he questioned him as to whether he was already dead. And ascertaining this from the centurion, he granted the body to Joseph. Joseph brought a linen cloth, took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, Tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb?